Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow workshop. Happy 2018 or 12,018 in the human era. So I'm excited to be back. I hope you guys are too. Uh, this year, there's a lot of things that's going to happen with Webflow and it already started. Uh, if you're following us on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Webflow app, uh, we just announced that we fully launched Site Search. And we got a cool uh, marketing page that the marketing team has created to help you understand more about it. But man, that's just the beginning. We've already, we're already only the second week into the year and we already launched something. So that should tell you what's happening for the rest of the year. Um, uh, someone asked in the chat room before we streamed, uh, why weren't we here last week? Well, uh, a lot of people, including myself, got sick, and I was like, I really wanted to stream, but I didn't have the the energy to do it. But thank you guys for uh, staying with us and being here. Oh, okay. So, what are we doing today? Today is episode 109, and we're going to create a Zoom scroll interaction. And my, uh, my uh, inspiration for this was this website called Magic Leap. It's a uh, product, it's a augmented reality product and their website is is pretty, pretty cool. And let me show you real quick. This is uh, a scroll interaction. If I scroll down, it's like you're coming outside of a portal and then you scroll even more and then we go down and then we just go through the rest of the marketing page. It's pretty cool. And as I kept scrolling up and down, I kept on thinking, is this possible in Webflow? And I broke it down and said, yes, it is. And I want to show you guys how easy it is to do this inside of Webflow. Now, before we get into it, uh, before we get into it, if you're new to the stream, welcome. This stream happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. If you're watching a recording, come back to the live stream so you can join the live chat. There's a lot of awesome people from the community community that are in there. Um, what we do in this stream is we rebuild popular pages like magicleap.com. We've done apple.com, tesla.com, so stuff like that. We rebuild those from scratch inside of Webflow. And um, the reason why we do this is because we want to empower you to look beyond the surface of Webflow. Um, it's not just templates. It's not just a WYSIWYG that some people think is just doing the code for you. It does much more than that. Um, and the point of this stream is to challenge yourself to experiment with Webflow. Go beyond what you see in front of you. And after you experiment, you'll really see what you're really capable of doing in this new age of web design, okay? Now, for uh, for everyone, including the uh, uh, people, the veterans or the web flowers of uh, Webflow, the community, we have a new format for this stream. So starting today, we're going to do uh, the build or whatever topic we're going to be talking about. And then we're not going to take like a half time where I do the site, uh, site reviews and QAs. Um, we're going to do that at the end, so right after I'm done building out everything, at the very end of the stream, we're going to do the site reviews and any questions, in, uh, I'll answer any questions you may have in the live stream. So, a uh, quick introduction, Anna, our new, or, Anna, Anais, our new uh, community manager at Webflow, is in the live chat room right now taking your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, she'll jot it down and I'll answer them at the end of the stream. All right? Um, let's see here. Is everything cool? Let me check the, okay, the chat room's doing good. Uh, the stream's going, my stream software is doing good. All right, let's get into it. Uh, da -da. there we go. Cool. So let's review one more time. Up and down. Okay. That's all it is. Now, I had to break it down and try to figure out, okay, what are they really doing? And I'm not going to recreate it exactly. I'm just going to give you a little bit of the basics of it. And as I broke it down in my head, I thought, okay, it's, it's a paper 
that's on top of this image, okay? But we don't see the paper because we're zoomed all the way into the paper. And inside, in the middle of that paper in the very center is just a cutout, a circle cutout. So if you were to put the paper like this and you're putting your head through the paper, and then as you scroll down, you go like this with the paper and then you see the actual cutout and also the um, image inside of the, the hole that you cut out is zooming out as well. That's all it is. And I tried that. Um, I tried that over the weekend. I kind of practiced and it kind of worked. So let's get into it all right so uh i i'm just gonna use two assets i already uploaded and um let me just drag it into the canvas so you see okay right there all right so this is actually something that i just cut out with photoshop so the center i just cut out on my own so if i change the background of the body you'll see what i mean see so it's just a cutout so it's a PNG that's really huge, okay? And so that's the thing we're gonna zoom all the way into, kind of like putting our head through the computer screen, okay? And in the background, we're going to put a galaxy or nebula, whatever this is. It's just beautiful, <laughs> all right? So this is what's going to be behind it. All right, uh, let's have some fun, all right? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a section and we're gonna call this hero. And this hero, I'm going to set the height to something crazy. Let's make it, uh, let's make it 4,000 pixels tall, okay? We don't have to set the width to auto. Uh, we don't have to set the width to 100% because it's already auto, okay? So auto means 100% already, so that's done. This is going to control how far we go scroll down and make the uh, interaction happen. All right, so now we're gonna have two layers. The first one is going to be that, uh, we're going to put the space one. Let's go and put the space one right here. All right, so I'm gonna put here, we'll call this space, and we're going to set it to fixed, okay? Because I don't want this element to move. I want it to stay on the page as, as I scroll up and down, all right? So let's go ahead and set the width to 100% and the height only to, uh, 100 VH. VH means viewport height. Okay. And let's go ahead and put our space background. I'm going to set the cover, which means it stretches all the way to the left and right. We don't want it to tile or repeat. All right. And we'll center that in the position 50 50. Okay. Cool. Cool. And that's about it for that space, all right? So I think this, this stream is going to go really fast. So let's drag in another one. And on top of it, I want, I want to put, uh, let's put, call it desk, okay? And again, position is fixed. Width is 100% and the height is 100 VH. This is gonna go on top of space, so I'm gonna make sure that the Z index is one. Z index is kind of like layering inside of a Im an image editor like Photoshop where you have layers on top of layers. So Z index, the higher you go, the, the more forward the uh, element is. All right, uh, let's add a background to it. All right, set it to cover like that. It's 50-50 tile, okay. So it's, as you can tell, it's really not that hard to set up, okay? I already have the main things happening, okay? So the hero is going to dictate how far I have to scroll down. If you can see this scroll bar right here, it's gray. This is gonna dictate uh, my scrolling interaction, okay? So let's get into interactions. This lightning bolt is our interaction, and we're going to set this to the page trigger, okay? So, actually, can we do it on the... Let me try something else. Let me try the element trigger. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so while scrolling in view, okay? Now, we have the hero, not the space or the desk selected. We have the hero, okay? Because we want to make sure that we're setting the interaction to the hero, okay? 
So play scroll an animation, and we're going to add one. Okay, now that we have um, that, uh, if you if you go here, we have the lightning bolt icon. Now we have a element trigger happening on the hero element. Now I can go here and select um, another element. So we're gonna select desk, and let's go ahead and rename this scrolling interaction. And I'm gonna press the plus sign, and I'm gonna set this to scale, okay? So at 0%, we want to scale it to like 10. Let me see, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay. Uh, let's go 5. Okay. Kai Jolly says, this is easier than I was expecting. I was expecting to see SVG with the circle cut and the whole... Actually, Kai, that's what I did in the beginning of my um, practice. And I was like, this is not working. I need to make it easier. And so, yeah, I think this is an easier way. And I know Magic Leap, my, the team behind Magic Leap, or whoever they hired to do their website, uh, did a lot more because I actually like looked down at their code and they used Canvas and a lot of stuff that um, was just crazy. And I was like, I got to make it easier. All right, so here we go. So I set the zero at five scale and the desk to one. All right, so if I do a live preview, there we go. Okay, now as you can see, the space isn't moving. But if I go to Magic Leap, the what we'll call space, the virtual area, um, is actually zooming out as well. It's scaling down. So we'll do that too. Okay, so we have the desk already done. And let me go back to space. So navigator, going to space. And oh, one day I'd like to see that for real. I'm going to space. <laughs> and then click on the plus sign to add a scale um, interaction. And we're going to set this to, we're going to set this to one because we're going to start at one. And then we're going to scale it and go Click and drag this down to 100%, and when it gets to 100%, let's make this smaller. Let's see, how small can we go? Let's go 7. There we go. Cool, because I don't want to see the white. You know? So now we do a preview. Uh-oh. Maybe I need to do offset. Let's see here. What if I drag that there? Uh oh. And wondering why this isn't moving. Let's set that back to zero. What's happening, yo? Hmm, maybe the desk needs to move later? Ah. All right. Let's figure this out together. I'm wondering if this has to do with uh, this right here, animation boundaries. So start animation fully visible. All right, let's see what happens. Let me go back into it. Live preview. Kind of works, but why is this happening fast? Maybe we need to set this higher to like two oh that'll work oh so close the top all right so i need to make space slow down a bit so maybe if i add another scale something like right here so if this starts at two this should go to like 1.75 so right now i'm just guessing Oh, come on now. Come on, live preview. Let's go. There we go. See how it went slow? So I went slow, and then it goes faster as it... Okay, so I fixed that one.
All right. So what I did to find a workaround was I started at two and then I made it go to at 66% only go to 1.75 on the scale. So that way it goes slow. But from here, 66% to 100%, it goes fast from 1.75 to 0.7 on the scale. So if I live preview, that's what I'm talking about. And so there you go. All right. Uh, yeah, see, that was fast. It's only 1016. <laughs> I thought it would take longer than that. But here's the thing with Magic Leap. Um, they also did the mouse movement. Now, I can add as many mouse movement, movement um, interactions as I want, but this is something we've already tackled in previous um, streams. Uh, and there's also a Webflow University video tutorial on how to do this mouse movement parallax um, effect, and it's super simple. The video is under five minutes, so check it out. Our boy uh, McGuire and our education team has a great documentation on how to do this. So check it out, search for it on... Uh, university.webflow.com okay but uh as i broke this down over the weekend uh they use a lot of different um images to create this effect and again it's really easy to do they have um a cutout of this balloon a cutout of the spaceman uh and, and so forth if you scroll down um you guys already know how to do scroll interaction where text could just scale up. I mean, you can do that now with the quick effects that we added. Uh, super simple. And these chairs are its own layer, the, the table. And so that's how you get that kind of a feel that you're moving left and right inside of the room. All right. And these are uh, probably GIFs, GIFs. This one's a static image that just bounces up and down really slow. So yeah, a lot of this is very simple to do, but that shouldn't downplay the awesome work that the Magic Leap team did. Um, as with everything on websites, you can have a really great interaction, but it all comes down to content. Now they had their marketing team create all this cool content and this concept for a website to visually explain what the Magic Leap product is, okay? Oh, yes, uh, just like Kai says, the, the red leaves are good. Yeah, so, I mean, that part is really cool, how the red leaves come out of the tree, and you're zooming out, and I'm guessing all the leaves are, um, like a group of leaves are one layer, and group of leaves are another layer, and it's just zooming out, the same way that we just uh, did in the, the stream right now. Uh, I know the waterfall, it's its own layer, so yeah. Um, so great job to the Magic Leap team. And yeah, it's all about your content. So with this new knowledge on how to create this type of scroll effect like Magic Leap, what will you do with it? Okay. So as with every stream, um, at the end, I will put in the YouTube uh, description and also on webflow.com slash workshops. Uh, a URL to clone this exact project so you can take it apart, build on top of it, do whatever you want. Um, yeah, so after it gets to this point, you notice that it scrolls down, right, and goes to the next section. So let's just quickly make a, another section to show you that right after you're done scrolling, it goes to the next section. So let me bring in another section here. Let's just call this section and we'll make the height 800. Actually, no, let's put uh, like 150 padding on the top and bottom. We'll use say 20 on the sides. So I can't really see it. So as you can see, there's a blue line that says section right? I can't see it. Why? It's because this layer, the desk and the space are, are in my way because they're set to fixed. So what I'm going to do is temporarily turn the hero off. I'm going to do that by, let's do display none. Okay. So it's display none now. 
and now I can play around my section. I'm going to turn that um, hero uh, section back on later. So this one, let's just give it a, a Webflow blue color. Put in a container. And let's make sure that all the text is white. And let's go ahead and put in an H1. And let's go ahead and put rich text. And then there we go. Okay, so you can see something like that. Let's go back to the hero. Remove this display setting so we have that. Now we can press preview. And as we scroll down, come back to reality. And oh, whoops. Whoops. Hero. I think one more thing. Let me just double check. So overflow. No. In my head it worked. It's supposed to scroll away. Where did you go? Oh no. It's because it's fixed. All right. Um, not sure. <laughs> oh no! In my head, this worked, where I can scroll down and then the section go. But it makes sense because even if I do an overflow um, hidden, it's not gonna hide these guys because they're set to fixed. If I set them to position absolute, I doubt it'll work the same way. Yeah. And hero is supposed to be that. Oh. Oh darn. See? <laughs> That's not gonna work. Ellie says Z index. Teach me. Ellie, teach me. I have Z index one here in the desk. Oh, are you talking? Okay, wait, I think I get it. I think I get it. So the hero should be Z index. Uh, well, it's a default zero. This section should be Z index one because it goes on top. Ah, you got me. Thank you, Ellie, Eli. Oh, so close. I think. I wonder why. Maybe it has to happen faster on the. Uh... Maybe it has to happen faster here. Huh. But it's so pretty right now. I don't want to do. I don't want to mess with it. All right. So close. I just need a. Maybe the, or an easier way, let's make, just add some ridiculous margin at the top. Say, uh, let's start with 3,000. Just shooting a number out there for no reason. Let's see here. Okay. All right, so we're close. So maybe not 3,000. Let's go 1,000. Uh, not 100. Cool, 1,000. Yay, we did it. <laughs> Thank you, Eli. Oh, cool. Whew. All right. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of questions. Uh, let me see here. Um, let's see here. Let me check, let me check, okay. Um, any questions about this exact, I know I'm not going with the new format right now, but like any questions about this exact uh, interaction before we move on to site reviews?
No questions about um, any, uh, nothing else, no other questions except for the ones that have to do with this exact interaction. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if you co clone this, go nuts with it. Add like a cutout of a mug and then make that have um, parallax mouse movement where you're going left and right. So you can kind of do what Magic Leap is doing where the, the chairs move. Um, and then maybe add some... I don't know, floating balloons or floating rocks, whatever you want to do at a spaceship inside of of this, you know, or a satellite that's just floating and bouncing. But if you move your mouse left and right, it kind of moves with you. So do that kind of stuff. Build on top of this just to have fun and see what you can learn. All right. Does this translate well on mobile? Um, Steven uh, is asking, does this translate well on mobile? Uh, I checked on the Magic Leap, and it seems like it does, but here's the thing. Uh, let me go here real quick. Let's go to iPhone 8. Okay, cool. So, right, I have the developer tools open, and if I scroll down on my mouse wheel, it looks like it's ready for mobile as well, which is cool. And... In Webflow, yes, you can do, you can leave this interaction on for mobile. Okay, so let me go on this one. And it still works. If I go here, it still works. Okay. Oh, but you, uh, you might need to do some fixing here. Looks kind of weird. So what you can do, good question, let's... I have about like five minutes to fix this. Okay, so let's do this. FYI, if you didn't know yet, you can set the interactions per breakpoint. Okay, so we have our four breakpoints, uh, desktop, uh, tablet, mobile landscape, and mobile portrait. What you can do is if you notice here, it does it looks good but if I go here to mobile portrait it doesn't look good because look at we have these white margins I don't want that so what you can do is duplicate this interaction and turn off the, the main one for all the other breakpoints so let's get let's let me show you how to do that real quick so we go to hero and right here other settings so this will only happen this interaction will only happen on all of these breakpoints but not mobile portrait okay now uh, on mobile portrait though I want to do another scrolling interaction and so let's do this I'm going to click on these three dots and click duplicate go here and scrolling interaction 2 I'm gonna call this scrolling interaction mobile okay so let me go on this breakpoint so I can see it. Okay, so this is good. If I do a live preview. Hey, live preview. Um, hello? Okay, well, moving on. We go here, that's fine. This is fine. This is not fine. So this scale should happen. Okay, it should only go to one. Okay. And now if I close this out, while still selected on scrolling interaction mobile, I'm going to turn it off for all triggers, but then turn it back on for phone portrait. Okay? Now watch what happens. If I go to scrolling interaction, oh no, I have, my bad, my bad. So scrolling interaction, turn it off, turn it on for these three. I'm gonna close these out and add another element trigger while scrolling into view and do the same things. Okay, play scroll interaction, choose scrolling interaction mobile, turn all of these off, but leave that one on and set this one to fully visible. And there we go. I know I went there a little bit fast, but what, I, what I'm trying to explain is you can have two different interactions for the same one and base it on, uh, base the interaction on the breakpoint.
Cool? All right, so if I go here, we have our regular one. But if I go here, this one will fit. See how we well, don't have the white anymore on the sides? So there we go. Not too bad. Good question. All right. Um, site reviews. So yeah, that was a zoom scroll interaction. Have fun with it. Again, I will put the URL in the YouTube description and webflow.com slash workshops. All right. Um, so site reviews. It, last year or in the past, I've asked for your URLs for your websites that you want me to review in the live chat. Now we're doing it where you have to submit on our form. Uh, let me get the form URL real quick. Um, there you go. Shorten, copy. There we go. So I'm going to put the form URL. It's a Google form. In, I put the form URL in the live chat. And I'll also tweet it out, put it in the YouTube description, etc., etc. So I'll be looking at these before we stream. And I'll have some um, initial thoughts about it. That way we can keep these streams going in a more uh, smoother pace rather than me fumbling with uh, logistics and stuff, okay? So our first one, let me get to it, is from Austin. And Austin is creating a uh, portfolio website to apply for internships, okay? So when I think of portfolio sites, I always think about uh, what is this person's story? That's what I want to get out of a website. And with any website, even if it's a marketing site or um, a marketing site or e-commerce site, I always like to think, what is the story first? Especially if no one knows your brand or no one knows who you are, okay? So I like this already because it's a, it's a very different color. I don't see this color a lot on portfolio sites, so it's really yelling and trying to grab your attention, but it's not too crazy. Okay, and he's using Austin is using uh, bold text and is like really in your face. I love it so far. And his story is really simple. Jack of all trades, master of one. All right. So scrolling down um, more about me. Okay, cool. It scrolls down uh, here. I would kind of like to know who I'm 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 reading about. All right. Uh, he's putting a, a face. To the text really add some stuff and right here i would like to see uh this person's uh photo in this section because right now you're just you're a person who has some design sense and if i scroll down here it's like okay i want to know more about you it, i want to i want to see your face i want to uh, know who you are okay so you're talking to me i kind of want to meet you it's a uh, uh, you're you're starting this conversation with someone and when you start a conversation with someone you Give them a handshake and you look them in the eye and say hi. I'm Austin. Nice to meet you And so that's where I like to think about this as we scroll down. We see his work. I really like how um, You know you do an overlap right here. So this is really good uh, Let's see here I like this interaction right here that's cool very colorful the site's very colorful um okay i was gonna say there needs to be some green to connect with the top but there you go okay cool so yeah austin great job so he likes the flat design that's totally fine let's go into one of his pages doing the overlap that's cool nice see this is what I mean by story. I like it. So there's a, it's easy to make a portfolio site and say, here's my work. And then you just click over to the live site. And I'm making fun of myself because that's what I did on my own portfolio site. But this is better because not only do you say, here's the work I did, here's a link to the live site, but also here's the story behind it and what I had to do to make it happen. All right, even putting in challenges. So this really adds more weight to the project. All right, 
And uh, speaking about uh, photos, when I went to the About page, uh, that's where I see his photo. And this would have been cool if it's on the front page. Uh, it, yeah, if it's on the home page. Probably somewhere here or something. Okay. Um, even more about me. I, okay, so I know that that goes here. But yeah, um, most people don't bounce, or most people bounce off of the homepage, especially for portfolio sites. So maybe put the photo up there. So this is nice, showing uh, the skills. I like this flex box right here. This is really nice too. Uh, one thing to note, what I like about this is this is not a percentage. This is not bar graphs. This is not, I know 95% of HTML, 45% of C sharp or something like that. No, this is, here's what I know. And percentages don't really matter because, uh, code is always evolving, always new pieces of code and all that stuff. So how can anyone ever be 100%? There's no such thing. So Austin, great work. I love it. I don't really have anything else to say. Oh yeah, I saw this too. Uh, on your work page, on your, I think work too. Yeah, your work and writing page. You have this scroll bar. I think you're doing a overflow, uh, overflow flow scroll. Turn that off. Set that, set that to auto or just leave it as visible. I don't know why you have this scroll bar. But yeah, you might want to check on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, so great job, Austin. Next one. So we're only doing t uh, three today. Ethan. I know Ethan has crashed my <laughs> computer somehow in the past. Uh, let's see here. He says the main goal of his website is to present our club AV bots to sponsors looking to invest in us and impress static judges during competition. Uh, what he wants me to focus on is as a 14 year old uh, designer, 14, that's awesome. Uh, uh, website structure and layout is a bit tricky for me. Do you have any ideas to improve to help me improve? So I checked this out and Let's see here. You have a loader. That's cool. All right. Uh, first things first, thank you for not crashing my computer. <laughs> the stream is still up. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ethan, this is awesome. Uh, I like how you're doing a curved line. It's not a straight line. It's a curved line. So I like that. Um, I like... Oh, that's cute. Uh, I like your propeller. That's pretty cool. Um... The propellers is something mechanical, AV bots is, it seems like something about engineering and stuff like that. So I really like what you did so far. Okay. Um, and yeah, all of this is really, really awesome. I don't really have much to say. Uh, one thing is this, this just stands out and I'm like, but uh what i don't know what this is but if i click on it that's cool i maybe something to do with uh yeah so the this doesn't really make sense is this the logo for the marlin uh or is that high school not sure what this is so may need to do something with this but overall everything is really really clean like I I don't know what you what else you want me to, to say but the, I mean you being a 14 year old and you did this uh, yeah yeah dude keep going this is great uh, okay so, okay so one thing is make sure I'm gonna be nitpicky Make sure that your spacing is is consistent because right now this is too tight. This is too tight compared to this one. And if I scroll down, you have a lot of space. See, so yeah, just your your spacing. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, that's cool. I get it. I get it. 
And if you want to have more fun with it, this propeller, I really feel like that propeller could be used for something something else rather than just at the top left. I mean, not sure what, but like, it can add something. But great job. Ethan, you're 14? Man, when I was 14, I was just making lame GeoCity sites. <laughs> uh, look at you. All right, moving on. Uh, let's go to David. All right, so David is his goals of his site to facilitate connections between donors and recipients of digital technologies and provide feedback by way of success stories. So that's the main goal of the site. Uh, David wants me to look over the look and feel. Is it a modern looking design um, for and a good fit for an organization who facilitates the delivery of free hardware from donors to recipient charities. Let's take a look together. So first thing um, I noticed is, uh, okay, so a couple things to talk about. The contrast of this, uh, your logo and the dark blue background, they're both dark. So it's really, really hard to see your logo. Also, your logo has a lot of uh, detail inside of it and it's I totally understand you're talking about digital and you took that uh, you took the the word digital very literally into your logo and so you have what seems to be a circuit board with a bunch of circuits being routed left and right up and down and so it that pattern makes it really hard to see your logo and then on top of that, you have a script font for your tagline, aspiration and opportunity. That is even more hard to, to, to read, you know, on first glance. So maybe something more simpler for your logo. And remember, the logo doesn't represent uh, uh, your brand okay a brand is not a logo a brand is your tone of voice on all of your social media networks it's the colors that you use it's the way you conduct yourself when you hand over a business card to someone in person it's the way you give a handshake it's the way you give uh, uh, talks at meetups or if you're doing any conferences stuff like that that all incorporates into your brand. So maybe maybe a change to the logo to make it more simpler would help, okay? Because you wanna make that logo show up right away and people know who it is. All right, enough about that. Now, this um, moving text, it's nice, but without any background imagery, I really don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. Uh, what I like to see, and again, all of this is subjective. What I like to see is a background image that explains the foreground copy. And that foreground copy explains the background image. So they work together. Or it could be a background looping video. As long as they work together. Right now, it's just words. And you know, a lot of people like pictures and that's what the internet is uh, really good at, showing uh, visuals. So if you have any visuals to add to this slider, I would really suggest it. Also, slow down with the sliders. Take the sliders uh, slower. Or if this is an interaction, make this slower because um, what if people read slower than this? Or what if they want to, um, just take it in okay so there's that scroll down and we have even more circuit boards in the background I like how it's pushed back where you don't really see it but it still adds to your brand okay so that's good watch out for your spacing just like I said for Ethan the spacing here is tight below the arrow and right above this section but this spacing right here is um, open and then you scroll here this is tight and this is open. So keep it, keep your spacing uh, consistent. All right. So now here you have an infographic. That's cool. All right. 
So here, if this is your call to action, this is the main goal of the site. You want people to either send you a message or download a, a form. So this is where your conversion happens. And right now, I feel like there's too many things yelling at me. What I mean is you have this loud button right here is telling people, send a message. And then you have this loud uh, header saying, download our registration forms. So if I were to look at it like this and step back, I don't know which one you want me to do first. Do you want me to do all three at the same time? So you need to give your users a journey of which should I contact or should I download, okay? And how would I, how would I fix this? Um, this is where uh, type hierarchy comes into play. Okay. Um, because too many things are kind of yelling at me right now. All right. So you might want to like make this le less bold. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what would be a cleaner way to do this because there's so much information happening in this section. Maybe a two tab thing where would you like to contact us or would you like to download registration forms? So that way you don't see all the information immediately. Hmm, I would have to get back to you on this one. All right. Um, so yeah, work on those things. Uh, this um, process diagram is cool. I'm not really under. Uh, I don't understand the. Um, I don't understand this industry, so I can't really say much about it. But as far as how it's um, structured, the layout, totally fine. But it's just here. I feel like it's too much. But other than that. Uh, let me think about color. Hold on. So this is the first time you're using this maroon color. You're using gray. First time using purple, but you have purple in this kind. No, there's no purple here. But yeah, the, the the color tones are very dark until you get here, which is nice um, gray, and it gets dark here. But this is, hold on, let me go about. Uh, not sure if you need that interaction to happen. Because it doesn't add anything, anything to the brand. But okay, so you're already using the logo. So asking to change the, or is that Photoshopped? That looks like, is that Photoshopped in there? Because like, why is the TV screen like this big, but yet there's a, there's a margin here and a small margin here. If that's Photoshopped, then ask if you can change the logo, work on it a bit more. If not, then, you know, you, you, if that's what they all agreed on, you know, you really can't change their minds. That's, uh, that's the client. Um, let's see here. So yeah, you're, you're, this is all about people. And I would change the brand to be more people oriented because it has digital opportunities, education, employment, health, and well being of people living in underserved communities. I think this right here, this line, should be on the homepage. That explains it. And you, and maybe have some imagery of real photos of digital wings helping people. And I think that's where you, you can start. So yeah, so, so there's that. Okay, so um, for the other people who have uh, submitted, I will get to those next week. But yeah, thank you so much for submitting your uh, URLs. Uh, let's go and yeah, yeah, let's go to the questions, okay? So last 10 minutes of the stream. Where are my questions? Where are my questions? All right. Whoa, whoa, lots of questions. Here we go. Uh, Dimitar, uh, no more search beta. 
No more search beta, yeah. Because it's live. So play with search right now. There, there's a new, um, uh, new fix too, where you can choose where your, uh, where your snippet, your search snippet comes from. Okay, the text that the search results page has, you can choose. You can choose. All right. So hopefully you've answered your question. Black evening. Uh, regarding zoom effects with scroll, do these inter animations interactions render differently on different browsers? No. So um, what we try to do on Webflow is build the code so you don't have to build the code so it's cross browser compatible and cross device compatible. So you don't have to do the prefixes for Mozilla or um, Microsoft Edge, Safari WebKit. Um, Etc. You don't have to do that. We take care of that for you. So that way when you're designing Webflow, it works on all modern browsers and devices. Okay, so hopefully you've answered your question. Douglas Mason. Okay, so after your Zoom interaction is complete, would you then be able to then set up to scroll down like the site you're looking at? Oh, we answered that one. Uh, da, da, da. Stu wants to know your thoughts on this post. One large canvas. Eh? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Stu? Uh, let's see here. Inversion. Hi, guys. I'm trying to run t uh, TI. TI? Run test. Or find some help. Brainstorm. The title appears in the middle of the page. And you mouse over. Links appear. When you click on that, the links we zoom. Uh, can can this large canvas with panning and zooming effect be done in Webflow? If you can give me an example, can we give me an example of what you're trying to do? Title page, little page when when you mouse over links appear around the title. Um, yeah, that's uh, I can't recreate it right now. It might take some time. But yeah, that's easy to do. It's a mouse, just a mouse uh, hover effect where you hover over, over a circle, say you hover over a circle in the center of the page, and then these other menu items pop out of the circle. That's simple to do. Um, but yeah, once I, once I uh, figure out something, I'll probably post on that stream or thread. Kai. Uh, when you zoom in, any content will also be scaled. Uh, when you zoom in, I think we've already, we've already explained this. Yeah. When you scroll up and down, it's, uh, based on the, the height of the hero div. Yeah. Does mouse movement hamper scroll? No, it doesn't. Bec Black Evening asks, does mouse movement hamper scroll? No, you can have both. So, um, as you, you, you can have the scroll interaction applied to that hero row that we did and also the mouse movement. So you can have both and you can also have hover and click. And again, go as far as you can with Webflow and just see how, what you can do. And then you'll notice that you can do a lot and then hopefully that sparks your imagination to go even further. Uh, I mean, you know what what do you want to do with it? it's your imagination go for it um let's see here steven uh does it translate well on mobile okay already answered that one alexandra says it doesn't work on iphone uh i'll have to look at that kai can you explain smoothing never used it before uh look for smoothing inside of uh the university.webflow i think it's there but here let me explain that real quick. All right, where are we? Let's go to hero. Okay, so scrolling into view. All right, smoothing. So we're at 50%. So if I scroll down, it's like that, right? It's very straight to the point. It's right there on the... Okay, now let's go in smoothing to 100% and see what happens. So, oh, so I'm going to scroll down. See how I'm already scrolled? And it's still taking a while to catch up. That's what smoothing is. 
So on the Magic Leap, they kind of did that with the mouse movement. Now let's do smoothing 0%. Yep. See? And then 50% is like, you know, in between. So hopefully it answered your question. So that's kind of like zero, but there is some smoothing to it. Okay. So go ahead and play around smoothing. When is CSS Grids coming? Chris Cannon is asking. I don't know. I would love to see CSS Grids. Um, yeah, as with all features inside of Webflow, there's a lot we want to do. And we want to get it done as fast as possible. And we never set dates because we don't want to, uh, because software development uh, is tough. I wouldn't know the first thing about it. Um, but the, the team at Webflow does an amazing job making these features. And we don't want to disappoint the community. We want to make sure that we're coming out with features faster. And that's, as you can already tell, we uh, released Site Search today. And what will happen next week and the week after and the month after. So... When is it coming? I'm not sure. But is it coming? You can check the feature uh, wish list and you'll see. But uh, usually Vlad answers those questions. Oh, uh, side note, Vlad agreed to do a quarterly Q&A session with you guys instead of a, um, twice a year. It's going to happen four times a year, so yay. Uh, Andrified. Would you recommend hosting on GitHub? I don't know much about GitHub. I'm not much of a de developer. So would you recommend hosting on GitHub? Maybe that's a question for the community. Uh, I've only hosted on like HostGator, Media Temple, um, but that was back then when I was using uh, WordPress. And then when I got into my other jobs, I really rarely touched any hosting because the company already had their own private servers so yeah uh arvin okay our last question arvin is there any way to use this example to create a large canvas style website moving from one area to another fluidly like a giant brainstorm oh okay is this okay that's probably your um it's probably this yeah create a brainstorm uh maybe there is some um there is some code that you may have to put if you want to do like some fluid um, interactions when you're leaving a page going to another, but it seems seamless. It, it looks seamless. Uh, let me see here. Uh, GP designer workflow. Let me see here. So this designer is so good. Here we go. JP. So check this out. If I go here. Here. Oh, he changed it? Hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So he changed it a lot. Okay. So there, he changed it. He had it um, exiting interaction. So here, watch this. If I go here, you'll notice that there's an interaction that happens, and then look at the top URL. Okay? So interaction, then it changed pages. And so it's like I didn't really leave that. It seemed seamless. So what he did is he added code where you click a link. He, you click a link, and it stores that link inside of the browser memory so the interaction could happen. Right after the interaction is done, then it takes that URL and tells the browser, hey, go to the next URL. And then when it gets to that next URL, it's actually a page loader that's the same color of the previous interaction, and then it um, it swipes away and sh reveals the, the the next page. So it's it's a little bit of trickery, um, but if you look at the code on this website, you might be able to find the JavaScript. Oops, where's my? Nope, not that. I'm gonna post his link on the chat room 
the designer.jp. Cool. I think that's all the questions. All right. That was fun. That was fun. So I think that's it for today. Let me check something real quick. All right. Cool. So we're trying to make these streams a little bit shorter so you guys can get on with your day and hopefully you guys learn something. Hopefully you like the new format that we're going with. If you have any suggestions or comments about um, our streams, please go to forum.webflow.com and let us know. Or just talk to us on Twitter and stuff like that. Speaking of which, let's go through our ending, ending things. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you need any account billing or technical help, please go to university.com slash webflow slash uh, university.webflow.com slash contact and fill out that form and I and the rest of the support team will help you out as fast as we can. Join the community at forum.webflow.com. Lots of great people there. If you have a question about design or custom code or how to do what uh, JP did on his site, please ask that on the forums and if someone answers your question do us a favor and pass that favor forward so answer someone else's question so that the whole community can grow together this stream happens every tuesday at 10 a.m pacific standard time follow us on twitter at webflow app or you can follow me at the pixel geek follow us on instagram it's at webflow app what else um Oh yeah, facebook.com slash webflow. And I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next week. And as always, make the web beautiful. See ya.